Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It started out with what seemed harmless. A man asking for the time, but soon things took a scary turn. And now San Antonio police need your help identifying the suspect. All the details just ahead here on GMSA. Plus the latest when it comes to the Johnson and Johnson vaccine here in San Antonio, why local health officials say it is safe to get. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 58 degrees to start your weekend. We saw some rain yesterday, so what does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 6 o'clock this Saturday, April 24th. Did you get hit by the rain yesterday? I did, and um, I got in my car this morning. Mm -hmm. I left one of my windows down all night, <laughs> and I knew it was raining. Right. I just, you know, I blame... Didn't even register. I blame my dog Scooby because mm. he he requested the window to be down. Of course, did he verbally say that? Yeah, he said. Okay, that makes sense. Sarah, I'd like you to put the window down for me, please, as we drive through the neighborhood. She was courteous. Yes, of course, right. he's a gentleman. <laughs> so, so. But oh how many? Do we goodness. know how many inches of rain we got so well, I can check we... my car? <laughs> Was there a puddle this morning? I didn't want to look. I heard oh. some sloshing. Oh, no, Sarah. Well, officially at the airport yesterday, we got about seven tenths of an inch of okay. rain. But there were other areas like the downtown area that got even a little bit more than that. So <laughs> I would not doubt that there is a little bit of a puddle in your Mildew. <laughs> See, we can tell you about the rain, but we can't tell you to roll up your car windows. We just can't do that. Sorry. Uh, now, it's 50 degrees up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 46 in Comfort, 46 in Bandera, 61 in Canyon Lake, and 59 at JBSA Randolph. We needed that rain yesterday. It did come with a severe thunderstorm warning around Bear County, but at least we got some good rain in many spots. Temperatures are cooler and also we're seeing some drier air move in. You can see a very clear line here with the very dry air up in the hill country. Dew points in the 30s in Kerrville and in Comfort. Meanwhile, dew points in the 50s here in San Antonio. But that is an improvement. You know, yesterday after that first round of rain, when you were walking outside, I'm sure you could feel just how humid it was. Uh, but today dew points will be falling into the 40s for us in San Antonio. And this weekend is going to be very nice. It's going to be a rain free weekend. We'll be looking at sunshine both today and tomorrow with low humidity too, but it is going to be warm. Cool mornings, warm afternoons, afternoons in the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees this weekend. Hey, coming up in the forecast, I'll, I'll break down how much rain we saw in the San Antonio area yesterday, and we're going to talk about our next chance for rain in the forecast in the coming days. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. On the city's west side, a woman carjacked at gunpoint. The incident happened back in early March, but San Antonio Crime Stoppers just released the details of the crime and hope the public can help identify the suspect involved. Lisa Barrera joins us live downtown with the details. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, this man is wanted for aggravated robbery of a vehicle that happened back in March 4th. But here's the thing. Here's a scary thing. It happened in plain daylight in a very trafficked area. So take a look on your screen. Do you recognize this man? He has short, dark hair and a large tattoo on his right forearm. According to investigators, the man pictured walked up to a woman in a vehicle at the 8800 block of Highway 151 to ask for the time. It was right around lunchtime, around 1220 p.m., near a shopping center and restaurants. Investigators say the man then walked to a nearby bus stop and waited there for a few minutes, but later walked back towards the vehicle. The suspect went around the back of the woman's vehicle and opened the driver door and demanded that woman get out of the car. The victim told police she had no other option than to comply. She was scared for her life, but she also saw what appeared to be a handgun in his front pocket. The suspect took off and the woman's car headed north from the location. He hasn't been seen since, so if you have any information, his name or his whereabouts, you're asked to, cr to call Crime Stoppers. You could receive a reward of up to $5,000. That number to call, 210-224-STOP. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, we begin our coronavirus coverage this morning with the pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine being lifted. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention determined the benefits outweigh, outweigh the risk of blood clots. A total of 15 vaccine recipients developed the highly unusual blood clots out of nearly 8 million people 
who got the shot. All were women. Three of them died. The vaccine will not be restricted to certain age groups, but they must come with clear warnings about the clots. A local epidemiologist says it's important to monitor those rare side effects, but overall she agrees the vaccine is safe. Meanwhile, Metro Health says it has 2,300 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine ready to go into arms. Now, while there have been no reported issues related to the vaccine here in San Antonio, the state of Texas is looking into one. The Texas Department of State Health Services says the CDC notified them this week about a woman who was hospitalized after she received her dose of Johnson & Johnson. And for those who are hesitant about getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, Alex Mattingly of Metro Health says you still have the Pfizer and the Moderna option. It's normal to feel hesitant and you can definitely find more information by talking to a pharmacist or your primary care provider but we're confident that the vaccines are safe and they're really effective at preventing severe disease, which is important in our community. Metro Health says more than 25,000 people across Bear County have already received the J&J &J vaccine, and we have not heard of any of the blood clot side effects here in the county. And to help people get vaccinated, Metro Health will be taking its efforts on the road tomorrow and Monday in form of a mobile clinic. The event is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Antioch Sports Complex on the east side. You can see the address here on your screen. That's just off of North Walters. Metro Health will be administering the Pfizer vaccine. Anyone 16 and older can get it. Another mobile clinic is scheduled for Monday on the south side of the Knights of Columbus Hall and on the west side, the New Life Christian Center. All right, now for a look at the Johnson & Johnson vaccine on a national scale. ABC's Ty Hernandez has a story. After an extensive review of the available data, the FDA and CDC are lifting the recommended pause on the Johnson & Johnson or Janssen COVID-19 vaccine. Citing an urgent need to vaccinate the country quickly, a CDC advisory panel is recommending the nation resume injections of the Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine with an updated fact sheet, warning of the potential for extremely rare but serious blood clots. With these actions, the administration of Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine can resume immediately. Health officials put a pause on using the vaccine after six women came down with severe blood clots about two weeks after getting the shot. The CDC says there are now 15 of these cases, most of them with severe blood clots near the brain. All of them are women between 18 and 59 years old. Three of them died and seven are still hospitalized. But health officials underline that these are out of 8 million Americans who have gotten the shot with no serious complications. Dr. Fauci on MSNBC. Remember, this is a very rare uh, uh, complication, a very rare adverse event. They also say outcomes could be improved if people are aware and seek help right away. Meantime, fewer Americans are getting their COVID-19 vaccine. The daily average of shots is now below 3 million a day for the first time in weeks. Scientists have put together this map. The areas in darker blue show where Americans are resisting the vaccine the most. The country's seven-day average of daily cases is now about 62,500, roughly 10 percent lower than last week. But at least seven states have seen an increase in new cases over 10 percent. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Now let's take a look at where Bear County stands when it comes to the virus. Local health officials are reporting 68 new COVID-19 cases with no new deaths. In our hospitals, 253 COVID-19 patients are in there and 84 patients in the ICU and 44 on ventilators. Time now is just about 6.09, 59 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, keeping your babies safe. Our Marilyn Moritz tells us why Firefly Frank Teethers and Playgo Activity Rattlers, they're being recalled. Oh, plus it is Saturday. You know what that means, sir? What does it mean? That means we got a new episode <laughs> of Texas Eats airing today at 10 a.m. But after the break, don't worry, you don't have to wait until 10 a.m. We are going to give you a preview. That looks delicious. Ooh, I breakfast? need about four. Yes. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam. 59 degrees, like Sarah Spivey was saying, it's a bit muggy out there. She'll have our full weekend forecast when we come back. That's like one of my favorite ones for here. Wow, the ranchetto sauce on there. You can put that on anything. Yeah. And it's gonna be delicious. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's a little bit smoky even. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
But the bread, I mean, you're making the bread here in house. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, the bread is the, uh, well, that's why it's a bakery. <laughs> and bakers are supposed to, uh, to yeah. bake. David's like, hey, David, listen up. We're a bakery. We make bread here, okay? <laughs> no, but I mean, it's incredible. This right here is being, it's all being done right here in house. Yes. And you're, it's just a knock, knockout. This is crazy. If you want to get a breakfast bite unlike anything else in the Alamo City, you got to try the Ranchero Eggs Benedict. It's a little bit smoky, it's a little bit sweet, but overall, it's very savory and very filling. The sauce on there mixed with the eggs, the perfectly poached eggs, which is a killer point of this as well. That is the ideal bite that you want in the morning. Yes. That is so good. Yeah. And that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, uh, you, can, you can take it for uh, breakfast or you can take it for brunch too. Mm. A little soup on the side. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Place is amazing. Obviously, that looks fantastic, but their pastries. Oh, I was craving conchas, and uh, I went there on Thursday. got a big chocolate one. It was yummy. Sarah, the weather. Okay, so I, it's not <laughs> humid outside. No, I feel like humid. it's humid because my hair is telling me it is. But, Sarah, you said it was actually dropping and yeah. a drier weekend. Exactly. You know, even though we're going to be able to get up into the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees today, the humidity is going to be low, so it'll feel great outside. I want to talk for a second about the rain that we saw yesterday. Here's a look at uh, precipitation around Bear County. In the next half hour, uh, I'll show precipitation outside of Bear County as well, because we did get a good amount of rain outside of Bear County itself. Uh, but yesterday, in total, uh, from midnight to midnight, we saw 69 hundredths of an inch of rainfall. That brings our month total to only 88 hundredths of an inch, which is a lot less than average for this month so far. And we got the majority of our month's rain yesterday. On top of that, when you consider how much rain we've seen since the 1st of January, we've seen uh, close to four inches of rainfall. That means that yesterday we saw a fifth of this year's rain in one day. And it really wasn't a ton of rainfall, but we'll take anything we can get. Notice the departure from average. We are about three and a half inches below where we should be this time of year, of course, with the very dry summer months ahead. Now, with that rain did come some uh, penny to quarter sized hail in some spots around Bear County, uh, but uh, most of the severe weather was actually south of us uh, toward Campbellton and in Atascosa County. And we'll talk about that again in the next half hour. For now, though, I want to show you the weather pattern. It is quiet across the state of Texas. After a day of severe weather, there were some tornadoes in East Texas yesterday. Uh, but looking off to the east, you can see where that system is right now, bringing tornado watches across much of the Gulf uh, Coast states there. And in its wake, we're seeing some drier air moving in. That's why it feels pretty pleasant outside right now around San Antonio. Look at this temperature spread across the state of Texas. 40s in the Panhandle, 43 in Amarillo, and it's 73 in Victoria and 76 in Houston. Still warm and humid uh, in uh, on those coastal counties there from Houston down to Corpus Christi where temperatures are in the 70s. But here locally around San Antonio, we're seeing improvement in the humidity, seeing it drop. It's cold, chilly in Kerrville, where it's 41 degrees. Meanwhile, 63 in Rock Springs, 63 in Del Rio. And again, drier air is trying to push in. We'll be able to see our dew points drop from the 50s, where it feels pleasant, into the 40s, where it's noticeably dry today around San Antonio. So in the future cast, even those clouds that are out across the coastal plain are going to clear out. We're going to have total sunshine all day long. It's going to be breezy at times, and temperatures, especially out to the west, are going to be toasty. 93 for the high in Del Rio, 96 in Catula, 97 in Laredo, 94 in Carrizo Springs. These areas have to watch out for elevated fire danger today uh, because of the breezy and warm conditions. Meanwhile, around that I-35 corridor will likely be in the mid to upper 80s. So here in San Antonio, 66 at 10, sunny, low humidity, noon, it's going to be 77 degrees. Today's going to be a great day to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. 87 for that afternoon high, sun will set at 806. It'll be just a touch breezy again with winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So let me take you through the future cast tomorrow. We'll be warm. We'll be starting off chilly uh, in the mid 50s, but then we'll be warming up 
to near 90 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Again, total sunshine. Upper level low is going to move in during the week. Humidity will return on Tuesday. And as that upper level low approaches, we're going to watch out for some isolated storms on Tuesday and on Wednesday, mainly in the later afternoon hours. It's going to be a pretty warm week, especially when that humidity returns on Tuesday. Uh, you'll definitely feel it, but at least this weekend is going to be pleasant, a little warm, but definitely nice to be outside. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 618, 59 degrees out. Well, the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse estimates 15 million people have some type of drinking problem. Still ahead, when you should give your body a break from drinking. Well, it's an investigation into Tesla's autopilot feature after a deadly crash last week. Our Marilyn Moore says the details next. Good morning and welcome back. Consumer Reports has some interesting findings following the deadly Tesla crash that happened just last weekend. They say they were able to easily trick a Tesla into driving in autopilot mode even with no one behind the wheel. And today's Consumer News, Marilyn Moritz shows us the video as well as recalls of some baby products. When this Tesla crashed into a tree near Houston, two passengers died. Police say it appears there was no driver. So Consumer Reports went to its test track to see if Tesla's autopilot technology could be activated with no one in the driver's seat. Engineer Jake Fisher was able to engage the autopilot feature of this Tesla Model Y and then move into the passenger seat. As you can see, the car continued to drive. In our evaluation, the system not only failed to make sure that the driver was paying attention, but it also couldn't even tell if the driver was there at all. Safety advocates say driver monitoring systems must discourage risky behavior and keep the driver actively engaged and monitored at all times. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has indicated that the autopilot feature wasn't even enabled during the crash, which is under investigation. Now another family safety news recalls of baby products. Parent alert, take this teether away from infants. Batat is recalling 61,000 Firefly Frank teether sold at Target. The wings are a choking danger. Take it back and get a refund. And 18,000 Playgo activity rattles sold at Walmart are recalled. The ring can detach from the horse and babies can choke on the beads. Contact the company for a free replacement. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now is 623, 60 degrees out. Well, coming up after the break, getting into the fiesta spirit from a safe distance. We'll tell you about the first ever porch parade contest and how to enter. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend since there will not be a Battle of Flowers parade or Fiesta Flambeau parade this year. San Antonio is trying something new, a porch parade. Yes, you heard that right. It is a safe virtual event and a citywide decorating competition for homes, schools, and businesses. It starts started April 23rd and it goes until May 24th. So right now on KSAT.com, you can submit your decorations to enter to win prizes and most importantly, Fiesta bragging rights. <laughs> Duh. The total of seven winners will be announced on Friday, June 18th during KSAT's Fiesta special. You can read more about the contest on our website. I already decorated my. I was going to say, I brought this up to you, and you're like, well, I've been decorating, so everyone better catch up. I expect you to win. I did not say that. <laughs> Time now, 627, 60 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, the San Antonio Water System is partnering up with the Food Bank to help those in need. Details on where you can drop off donations today. Plus, a new initiative to help children in a Texas foster care. A new contract with St. Jude's Ranch for children, beans for those affected. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. 6.30 this morning, April 24th. Yesterday started the porch parade for Fiesta. Yes. Did you uh, did you decorate accordingly? I decorated about a week and a half ago and then it rained. <laughs> All the decorations. I had a little piñata up. It's no longer a piñata. Mm. It's a little melted now, Sarah, from all the rain, but we oh. needed this rain. It's about the saddest thing I've ever heard, a melted <laughs> piñata. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we did need the rain. Uh, thanks for taking one for the team there, Sarah. Uh, we absolutely needed the rain. Now, not everybody saw rain in the KSAT 12 viewing area, especially up into the hill country. It was pretty dry over the last couple of days, but officially at the airport, we saw a little bit less than three quarters of an inch of rain. 
much needed rainfall. 58 degrees though this morning in San Antonio, 50 in Hondo. I think it's fair to say it's cool out there in spots, especially up in Kerrville where it's 42, 49 in Yavaldi, 52 in Carrizo Springs. Uh, and in some spots though, we're still dealing with higher humidity. Look at the humidity tracker right now. Very low humidity out to the west for Del Rio, Rock Springs, and Yavaldi. We're starting to see even lower humidity here in San Antonio as that dry line pushes to the east toward us, but it's still fairly muggy in Gonzales, even down near Pleasanton, Kennedy and Victoria. And these areas we do have some fog and Pleasanton. That fog is is pretty dense. The visibility is down to half a mile there, down to half a mile in Beeville, down to a mile and a quarter in Victoria. But for most of us today, it's going to be a pretty nice day. Let's say you want to go for a run today on Saturday. I hate to talk about exercising on the weekend, but some folks do like to do that. This morning, it's going to be nice and in the 60s generally, and in the afternoon, 87 for the high temperature, but at least the humidity will be low. So I'll, I, I myself will be taking a run this afternoon, even though it will be a little toasty. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about our next chance for rain, and I'm going to recap the storms from yesterday and show you which areas actually saw some hail. Sarah and Max, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Well, local organization is working full steam ahead as it prepares to take over the care of children removed from homes by the state. St. Jude's Ranch for Children was granted the contract to be the primary care provider for children in Region 8B, which encompasses 27 counties outside of Bear County. The agency has decades of experience as a foster care provider, but will now be doing it for about 600 more children. This is part of lawmakers efforts to privatize foster care in order to better serve children. The agency says they're looking to hire and also partner with foster care families and church organizations to support those families. They know not everyone can sign up to be a foster parent, but they can help support families who take on the task. We're really hoping to partner up with other agencies that are already there and bring services in. So using telehealth, telemedication, having a spot in those across the region where families can go and visit and, and work services to ultimately get their child back. The organization will go live with its first phase starting October 1st. If you're a church or community organization in one of these 27 counties and want to help if you're looking for a job, head to ksat.com for that link. All right, well, we know the local election set for May 1st, and there's only a couple more days left to vote early. At last check, more than 44,000 people across the city have cast their ballots, and today, polling locations will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That is two hours longer than during the week. After that, early voting will run Monday and Tuesday of this coming week. During the same hours, if you have any questions, if you want to see a sample ballot, we have all these answers and so much more. Just head to ksat.com slash vote and this weekend very special weekend it is tax-free weekend in texas of course it's not to prepare for school it is to have a game plan for the next possible weather emergency and this way you can save some money while preparing well today through monday the state is waiving sales tax on a long list of supplies our alicia Beretta joins us live with more on what items are tax exempt good morning alicia Good morning. Well, remember when we were all at home shivering in mid-February, probably thinking a portable generator was a good investment or how about just having an extra external battery for your phone? Well, this weekend might be a good time to go to the store. That way you can save some money and be prepared for the next emergency. So on your screen, you have the details. It's happening today. It goes on until Monday. No sales tax and no quantity limits on supplies that can be vital during natural disasters. The tax breaks also applies to online purchases. So if there are any shipping charges, those are included as part of the price of the item. Here's what qualifies for this tax-free weekend. Portable generators, hurricane shutters, emergency ladders, batteries, fire extinguishers, also on the list, fuel containers, carbon monoxide detectors, and cell phone chargers. There are some items that do not qualify, so we have those listed here for you. The ones that do not qualify this weekend are masks, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, car batteries, camping supplies, or plywood. But on ksat.com, we have a full list, all the details of the items that do qualify. 
And although there aren't any quantity limits, there are some price caps. So, for example, generators, you will get that tax break if they're less than $3,000. So, again, we have all these details listed on KSAT.com for this tax-free weekend. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, also happening today, the San Antonio Water System is teaming up with the Food Bank to help gather donations for families in need. They're holding a drive through food collection event today from 9 a.m. to noon. It's at SAW's headquarters in the customer service parking lot. They need canned foods and non-perishables like peanut butter, cereal, beans, and rice. And the city of Lytle is hosting an auction today from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the police station located at 15245 Hester Street. Items are going to be auctioned and, well, there's a lot of them. There's abandoned items by the Lytle Police Department and the old public works trucks. Now, only cash will be accepted. There's a large variety of items ranging from clothes to even trucks. A lot of vehicles out there. The city reserves the right to reject any and all bids. A Minnesota court has set a sentencing date for Derek Chauvin, who has who was convicted of murder and manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. Online court records say Chauvin will be sentenced on June 16th at 1.30 p.m. Chauvin was convicted this past Tuesday of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter for pressing his knee against Floyd's neck. Under Minnesota statutes, he'll only be sentenced on the most serious one, second degree murder. The max he would face is likely 30 years, but he could get less. Authorities say seven North Carolina deputies have been placed on leave after a black man was shot and killed by members of the department. Now, these members were actually serving drug related search and arrest warrants. Now, all of this comes as calls for increase for the release of deputy body cam footage and signs that Andrew Brown Jr. was shot in the back and killed as he was trying to drive away. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper joined calls for the swift release of the body cam footage, saying that initial reports of what had happened are, quote, tragic and extremely concerning, end quote. And Jeffrey Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, appeared has not pleaded has pleaded not guilty to sex trafficking charges. Yesterday was her first public appearance since her arrest last summer. Prosecutors say Maxwell helped Epstein recruit, groom and sexually abuse underage girls. Prior to Friday, she had already pleaded not guilty, but prosecutors added new charges last month. One of Maxwell's accusers attended Friday's court hearing. Maxwell is being held at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Time now is just about 640, 59 degrees out. Well, the final and biggest award show of the season is set for tomorrow evening. Still ahead, a preview of this weekend's Oscars Awards. And have you been fighting stress with a little wine? Drinking away problems with a couple beers? You don't have to be an alcoholic to have a problem with alcohol. Does your body need a break from drinking? We'll explain next. 59 degrees out there six at 639 this morning. You can see the sun starting to come out a little bit. Sarah Spivu will have our weekend forecast when you come back. Well, no doubt about it, it's been a rough year and many people turn to alcohol to self-medicate their stress away. The National Institute on Alcohol Abuse estimates 15 million people have some type of drinking problem. And even though you may not be an alcoholic, you may still have a problem. And as Stephanie Cern reports, that problem could be doing damage to your body and your brain. If I have a bad day at work, a little bit of kick that it gives at the end of a long week. My wife. No matter what drives people to drink, it's a fact more people are turning to alcohol. A new study from the Journal of the American Medical Association reveals alcohol consumption is up by 14% compared to a year ago. So how do you know if your body needs a break from all that alcohol? Doctors say if you're getting sick a lot, that could be one sign. Drinking too much in one sitting can inhibit your body's ability to fight off infections even the day after you drink. Another sign, your short-term memory is shot. Alcohol impairs the brain's ability to transfer information from the short-term memory to the long-term memory center of your brain. Also, if you had too much to drink, you may notice that your sleep isn't quite as sound. And just like sun exposure, drinking too much can wreak havoc on your complexion, creating inflammation in your skin, which can cause fine lines, enlarged pores, and even discoloration.
For GMSA, I'm Stephanie Serna. And if you're trying to cut back, many experts say it doesn't need to be an all or nothing thing. Instead, consider limiting daily or weekly consumption throughout the year. And remember, if you break your own rules, it doesn't mean you should give up on your goal. Just start over. And they showed the woman the skin damage. Yeah, that's. that's oh, that was a little terrifying to see that. Yes, it was. So let's change the subject. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and talk about how we are seeing some fog in some areas, not in San Antonio, but town toward Pleasanton. Visibility is at four miles out toward Gonzalez. Visibility is down to half a mile and down toward Beeville. You can see visibility is limited to uh, about a quarter of a mile. Now it's these areas that are still dealing with some of the humidity uh, as a uh, dry line is starting to push off to the east uh, and humidity is really low behind this dry line. Dew points are in the teens in Rock Springs and in the 20s in Del Rio. It's these areas with the extremely low dew points that are going to have an elevated fire danger today. So outdoor burning is discouraged for those areas. And that does include Eagle Pass, by the way, in Maverick County. But it is starting to get pleasantly dry outside. That low humidity is going to be a feature of the weekend. It's going to be beautiful this weekend, although a little warm in the afternoon. So yesterday, we definitely had uh, quite a bit of rain, even some thunderstorms. We had a round of thunderstorms in the morning and then a round of thunderstorms in the afternoon. Now things are nice and clear, but uh, the clouds are still out there across Beeville and Victoria. I want to talk about some of those areas that got some strong to severe weather. We had a severe storm that worked its way through the middle of Bear County and split off a bit, moving up toward New Braunfels and down toward Elmendorf. Now, on the west side in Leon Valley, uh, we had hail up to the size of nickels, penny size nickel, uh, penny size hail rather, and that was out in Leon Valley last night. And then in the middle, closer to downtown. San Antonio near Pinkerton's barbecue, there was quarter sized hail in last night, right after about 7 p.m. in those areas. But the very large hail was down near Campbellton, where there was up to golf ball sized hail down there, and a couple of trees snapped too in Atascosa County. Uh, but it did lead to some good rain in spots, and so at least we got some good rain in many spots from about an inch toward Pearsall, out toward about an inch and a half in southern Atascosa County. Wilson County got about an inch of rain in spots as well. Near downtown San Antonio, almost two inches of rain. Officially at the airport, about seven-tenths of an inch of rainfall, and out toward Seguin and in Guadalupe County, some good rainfall there as well. We needed it. We're under drought conditions. Out Outside right now, 58 degrees, clear skies, and temperatures are even chillier up in the hill country, 44 in Kerrville, 50 in Hondo, 42 in Comfort. Winds are from the north at about 10 miles per hour right now, but they're actually going to pick up and become a little breezy later on in the day. We'll see gusts of up to 25 miles per hour, uh, especially during the first part of the day today. But total sunshine, this is the high-res feature cast. It's going to be hard to find a cloud in the sky today. We'll be warming up nicely, though. Uh, even by noon, we'll be at 76. 7 degrees in the afternoon, 87. And while that is warm, again, the humidity is going to be low and very pleasant. Winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour from the north. Sunsets at 806 and will cool down into the 60s by midnight. Now looking ahead, low humidity today, low humidity tomorrow. But by Monday, that humidity is going to start to ramp up and it'll be just humid on Tuesday and Wednesday before a front moves through. Uh, and by the way, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we will have a chance for some storms. Ice Isolated storms in the second half of the day, uh, but just know that the low humidity will only last a few days here. At least it's over the weekend. We'll be warm tomorrow near 90 degrees with low humidity and then muggy, muggy, muggy Tuesday and Wednesday with that chance for isolated storms. We'll keep an eye on things for you this weekend, but it's starting to feel a little bit more like spring out there. All right, Sarah Spivey, two picture perfect days. Appreciate it. 648, 59 degrees out. Well, the most decorated gymnast ever is dropping Nike for another sports brand. Coming up after the break, the company Simone Biles has made a deal with, and why? Big deal. Yeah. For the sports apparel world. Yeah. All right, taking a live look out there at the roads. Sun coming out, 59 degrees out there. Nothing popping up on our roads. If you are out and about, drive safely. Be smart. If anything does pop up, we'll keep you posted. Now, take a look at those lotto numbers. Why don't you start us off? Pick three, two, five, eight, fireball five, daily four, nine, five, six, four, fireball five. And your cash five, one, four, six, 21, 30. 
Mega Millions, four, 28, 29, 30, 60, big number 25, Mega Power 3, did you win? I forgot to get a ticket. Oh, you are the worst. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you at work tomorrow. <laughs> In your morning spotlight news, Olympic gymnast gold medalist Simone Biles is dropping endorsement powerhouse with Nike for a deal with Athleta. Athleta is Gap's sportswear unit and taking Biles from Nike is huge for them. That's because Biles is the most decorated gymnast ever and one of the world's top athletes. She's the winner of five Olympic medals, four of them gold. Biles is also the first woman to capture five all-around gymnastic world championship titles. All right, well, the 93rd annual Academy Awards ceremony set for Sunday night, and it's going to look a lot different. That's largely due to COVID-19 restrictions, but unlike other award shows, producers want to limit the Zoom appearances. Jade Hernandez has a preview of the final and the biggest award show of the whole season. The countdown to the 93rd Annual Academy Awards is on. Once upon a time in Hollywood, he that's the truth. Producers of this year's broadcast promise viewers will feel like they're watching a movie. It's important that such a big show, an event that the entire world is watching, that we show what's possible with science and common sense. Nominees are being encouraged to attend in person with appropriate safety precautions. What we'll say is masks are going to play a very important role in the narrative of the show. The Academy announced last year will implement new diversity and inclusion standards for Best Picture nominees beginning in 2024. But this year's list of nominees appears to already be meeting some of those standards. I think the connective tissue with a lot of the films that are up for for either acting categories or best picture categories is that it's a reflection of what we're experiencing right now in 2021. Nine out of the 20 nominations for acting this year have gone to people of color. America is colorful and film is a universal language that changes and, and evolves. And we should welcome the way it looks, the way it's presented and who is in it. The frontrunner for Best Actor Chadwick Boseman posthumously nominated for his performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I got stopped. Oh. Also in the Best Actor category, Riz Ahmed, the first Muslim nominee for his performance in Sound of Metal. And Steve Young, the first Asian American nominated for his performance in Minari. For the nominees for Best Actress, Viola Davis is in contention to take home another statue after her fourth Oscar nod. And Andrew Day is also in the running and has already taken home a Golden Globe for her performance in the U.S. versus Billie Holiday. Jay Hernandez, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, time now is 6.55, 60 degrees out. The news you need to know before you go is next. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police need your help finding a man that they say robbed a woman's car back on March 4th. Police say this man approached a woman waiting in her car near the corner of Highway 151 and Petrenko Road around noon, asked her for the time and later carjacked her. If you have any information that can help lead to arrest, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. The San Antonio Chamber of Commerce has been front and center to help our local economy as we deal with this pandemic. Recently, members of the chamber testified in the state capitol. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA, the Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Council Chair is going to be joining us live. We're going to be discussing the issues that affect our local economy, the current state of the Alamo City, and what comes next. So if you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. It's 57 degrees right now, but with total sunshine, we're going to warm up nicely. Even by noon, we'll be in the upper 70s. In the afternoon, upper 80s, but there will be low humidity, so it'll feel nice today. A little breezy with north winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow, a nearly identical forecast, starting off cool, warming up quickly. And then in the week ahead, humidity returns on Tuesday with a chance for isolated storms Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, and again, it's going to be noticeably humid by Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, we only got about 20 seconds left. So how bad do we still need this rain though? We absolutely need the rain. So we're still under extreme drought conditions. Coming up at eight, I'll have rainfall totals around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. See you at eight o'clock. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now.
Habitat for Humanity is the help of the community to stay on track for 2021 builds. All the details just ahead here on GMSA. Do you recognize this man? Police say he's accused of carjacking a victim on the city's west side. How you can help solve in this case next. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it is picture perfect out there. 60 degrees to start this Saturday morning, but what does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, April 24th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Beautiful out there now. Yesterday, a much different story. Yeah, and I was so excited because I ordered a rain gauge for my house because I've been wanting to track how much rain my garden gets, if I need a water, whatnot. And Sarah, it came in right after our first set of showers, so I can't accurately oh. measure how much rain I got at my house. Well, don't worry, I'll have an updated look That's at what you're here for <laughs> around Bear County and the case at 12 being area in just a bit. For now, though, in the wake of the rain yesterday, it's nice and cool outside. Let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures. It is 50 59 degrees at the airport. That's up from our morning low around 57. 45 though in Kerrville, so a little bit cooler up in the hill country. It's in the 40s in Fredericksburg as well. 52 in Uvalde, 55 in Carrizo Springs, 60 in Gonzales. Now in some areas we've still got relatively high humidity. Look down toward Pleasanton and in Gonzales. You can see that the humidity there is in the 60s. That's toward the top of the scale. But here in San Antonio, we're actually seeing humidity fall as a dry line starts to move a little closer to San Antonio and dew points are in the teens up in Rock Springs. So very dry out west, desert dry out west, and still some lingering humidity for some of our coastal communities. And in those areas, we do have some fog this morning. Visibility down to five miles in Gonzales and down to seven in Pleasanton. But things look just fine here in San Antonio. And in the day today, with the uh, totally sunny skies we're experiencing and dry air, we're going to warm up really nicely. Uh, afternoon high temperature 87 for the high. Sunny skies a little breezy too with winds picking up from the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Once again, I'll show you those rainfall totals coming up in just a few minutes here, and we'll also talk about uh, the another chance for rain in our very near future in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help trying to find a suspect responsible for an aggravated robbery. So take a look at your screen, see if you recognize this man. Police say he is accused of a carjacking, and it happened back on March 4th in the 8800 block of State Highway 151. Police tell us the man opened the victim's car door, demanding she get out. Police say that is when the victim complied, and the suspect drove off in the vehicle. The suspect appears to have a tattoo on his right forearm. So if you recognize him or if you have any information that can help lead to an arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Now to an update on COVID-19 here at home. Health officials confirmed 68 new COVID-19 cases in Bear County. There have been no new deaths. Now taking a look at our hospitals, 253 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. That's up by 30 since Thursday, 84 patients in the ICU and 44 on ventilators. Meantime, the state of Texas is receiving more than 1.7 million COVID-19 vaccines next week. So far, more than 23.4 million doses have been distributed in Texas. More than 36% of Texans have re received at least one dose. Local elections set for May 1st, and there's only a few more days of early voting available. So far, though, more than 44,000 people here in San Antonio have cast their ballot. Polling locations open at 8 a.m. today. They're going to be staying open until 8 this evening. That is two hours longer than during the week. Early voting will run Monday and Tuesday of this coming week. If you have any questions or if you want to see a sample ballot, we have all that available right now. Just head to ksat.com slash vote. If you're looking for a new job, SeaWorld is looking to hire hundreds of people. It's hosting a job fair today. It starts at 10 o'clock this morning and runs until 4 o'clock this afternoon. The park is looking for full-time, part-time, and seasonal workers. It has open positions in park operations, food service, and maintenance, among others. You can apply before going to the job fair at SeaWorldJobs.com. Some positions come with a $200 hiring bonus. 
Our community clearly still dealing with the negative impact of the pandemic. Nonprofits are no exception. Less and less donations are coming in and some don't have enough to help not have enough help from volunteers. So although in a tough situation, Habitat for Humanity is committed to their mission of building homes for those in need. Our Alicia Barrera is live in Von Ormy, where one family, Alicia, will soon receive the keys to their new home. That's exciting. Very exciting. Habitat for Humanity is definitely helping uh, meet that need of affordable housing here in Bear County. And then right now we're at one of the construction sites. They're going to be busy this morning. There's actually two builds happening this morning and just in about two months, these homes will be complete. But what about that big scale goal? Stephanie Weiss, Vice President of Habitat for Humanity joins us. Good morning, Stephanie. Thank you for being with us. What is the big goal for Habitat for Humanity 2021? So this year, our hope was to build more homes, but we're planning on building 51. And how has COVID impacted that? Because we know, you know, in our community and of course with nonprofits, it's been a, a big hit. COVID's really been a challenge. You know, we built 51 homes last year. We had hoped to build more this year. Uh, so we're, we're staying at that 51 level, um, but, but it's really impacted our donations. It's impacted our volunteers. We have about half of our volunteers that we usually do. We usually work with about 15,000 volunteers a year and we're working with less. So uh, the more folks in the community can come out and help the better. And we know the price of materials itself has just gone up. So we know y'all need help. Why is it so important for community to step up, but also corporate sponsors? Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the price of materials has been crazy. We, um, we usually pay about $2 for a two by four. Now it's $7. So everyone in the community is needed, not just individuals and churches, but businesses, foundations, uh, just really it takes a community to come together to work with our families. Stephanie, thank you so much. We'll be back. We'll actually be here all morning long. And later on, we're going to be speaking to one of the corporate sponsors who have stepped up to help. And then we'll also be, be meeting one of the families who is actually going to be receiving the keys of the home very soon. So in a couple of months, we'll be back with more. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Time now is 807, 60 degrees out. Well, if you've lost a pet recently, if it's ran away, Animal Care Services may be able to help. Still ahead, details on its new tool that can help reunite you with your lost pup. And did your spring allergies come early this year after the break? Some easy ways to help fight them off. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 60 degrees out there, shaping up to be a beautiful day. Sarah Spivey will let us know what our Saturday and Sunday look like when we come back. Well, sneezing, sniffing, coughing, and itching. Over 50 million Americans experience allergies, and it's like you feel like it's been lingering a lot longer, and apparently it has been. Yeah, no, that just won't go away. So when spring arrives early, pollen arrives with it. Combine that with the coronavirus and a shift to our, you know, more permanent indoor living. Your allergies might be getting the best of you. This is making me want to sneeze. So to keep it under control, Stephanie Cerna has the answers. In earlier spring season, dramatic changes in the weather and spending more time indoors. A lot of people are more indoors now because of COVID and that would be uh, more dust and mold and perhaps domesticated animals. It all adds up to one thing. Having itchy eyes and not being able to stop like the teary eyed while um, I'm outside. Sneeze attacks. They, it can cause migraines and you know sinus infections. and. And while cleaning is at an all time high, some chemicals in the products can actually make your allergies worse. The best thing to do is to try to be uh, as least inflamed as you can by avoiding triggers. For pollen, avoid the outdoors at its peak and keep doors and windows closed. If you have to be outside when you get back in, take a hot shower and change into some new clothing. Air out your clothes in a dryer instead of sun drying. Always take your shoes off at the door and recirculate the air in your house and car. For dust, wash your bedding in hot water at least once a week. And for mold, reduce moisture in your bathroom and kitchen by using a HEPA air filter. For GMSA, I'm Stephanie Cerna. And we will have the pollen count a little bit later on this morning. We get it in every morning from our allergists and we report it on KSAT.com and on KSAT itself and on the weather app.
I will say though, yesterday both mold and oak were low. However, with yesterday's rain, I would assume that that mold number is going to go up. So mm. oh, we'll have to yeah. wait and see. But I did promise that I would show rainfall totals uh, before the break. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. A wide view first, and you can see that it was areas generally along and east of I-35 that got the most rain. Look up in Lockhart, four inches of rain in Lockhart. Floresville uh, got 8,300, Pleasanton got 39 hundredths, Eagle Pass 56 hundredths of an inch of rainfall, and at the airport officially 69 hundredths of an inch of rain. Let's zoom in and talk to about a neighborhood view. Downtown San Antonio close to an inch of rain. Of course, we also did see with this rain in the afternoon some penny to quarter sized hailstones uh, with a severe storm that moved through, but it did drop a good amount of rain at JBSA Randolph, more than an inch there, more than an inch in Seguin, almost an inch and a half in New Braunfels, about 6,400 at Stone Oak. And as you can see, areas uh, generally out to the west and in the hill country, not so much. Only 800 of an inch of rain out in Bernie, 600 of an inch of rain in Medina Lake, and 600 at Lotus as well. Now, a good portion of this missed out on the aquifer recharge zone. Of course, we are under stage two water restrictions, and so any water that we can have fall over the recharge zone is a good thing. But we did see some rain fall along that recharge zone in Comal and in Hayes counties. So we'll We'll show you the aquifer numbers a little bit later as well. Hopefully those have gone up again. Stage two water restrictions are in effect. Well, you can very clearly see where the system is now moving across the Mississippi River uh, and producing some thunderstorm. Uh, pardon me, tornado watches for the Gulf Coast states there in those uh, red boxes. But here in San Antonio, we're seeing drier air moving in for the north. It's 43 in Amarillo, 46 in Lubbock, quite a temperature spread across the state of Texas, about 30 degrees from Amarillo to Houston. Notice how in Houston, Victoria and in Corpus Christi, it's still pretty muggy and warm uh, while we're enjoying some of that cooler, more comfortable air. 59 degrees in San Antonio at the airport, 45 in Kerrville, 52 in Uvalde. And you can see very clearly where the dry line is moving through Austin, New Braunfels, San Antonio and Uvalde. We're seeing drier air push on in and dew points are in the teens in Rock Springs. So even though it's going to be warm today, it is going to be nice and dry with low humidity In the future cast those clouds that are along the coastal plain are going to clear out and we're going to be looking at total sunshine today and warming up really quickly. Look at these temperatures out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs and Catula mid 90s for the high temperature upper 90s for Laredo and these areas with a breeze from the north fire danger may be an issue, so try to avoid outdoor burning west of San Antonio. Meanwhile, around uh, the I 35 corridor temperatures should stay in the mid to upper 80s. So here's our forecast for the day in San Antonio, sunny and 66 at 10. 77 with low humidity at noon. Great for a Saturday brunch outdoors. 87 degrees for the high temperature. Uh, and again, it will feel nice with that low humidity. Sun will set at 806. So let me take you through the future cast for tomorrow. Waking up cool again tomorrow, 58 degrees. And in the afternoon, once again, total sunshine closer to 90 though. Again, thankfully we don't have high humidity to worry about or heat index values. And then in the week ahead, an upper level low is going to approach from the west. This is going to allow for some isolated showers and storms when Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be watching the atmosphere on those days for some storms as this time of year. Some of those storms could be on the stronger side. So again, watching those that chance for storms on Tuesday and Wednesday. Another big noticeable change that you will notice is how humid it'll be again on Tuesday. Until then, though, very nice outdoor weather for kiddos soccer games or walking the dog or just enjoying some time outdoors today. All right, Sarah Spivey. See, the problem is with all the allergies, it says, you know, try to stay away from outside. But when it's this nice out. You can't. Can't stay away. There you go. All right, 816, 61 degrees out. Those first go. All right, we are entering the home stretch of the regular season. Playoff hopes still very much alive. Huge game today. We're going to explain. And Fiesta is coming up after the break. How you can join the Fiesta Porch Parade celebration. 
And this is so exciting. No Mega Millions <laughs> winner last night. The jackpot is now 297 million. I'm excited because I forgot to buy my ticket. All right, well, don't worry. We are still going to read off the rest of the numbers. Pick three, two, five, eight, fireball five, daily four, nine, five, six, four, fireball five. Cash five, one, four, six, 2130. Here are those Mega Million numbers 4, 28, 29, 30, 60. Mega Ball 25, Mega Plier 3. Like that music. That was Viva. good. You got a little dance going on. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling it. Viva Fiesta San Antonio. The Alamo City is trying something new for 2021 since there will be no Battle of the Flowers Parade or Fiesta Flambeau Parade. So instead, Fiesta is introducing the Porch Parade, safe virtual event, a citywide decorating competition for homes, schools, and businesses. And it started just a couple days ago and it goes until May 24th. This is so exciting. KSAT 12 is airing a porch parade special Friday, June 18th at 8 p.m. You can head to our website for more information. Well, trending right now on KSAT.com. If you've lost a pet recently or it's ran away, San Antonio Animal Care Services may be able to help. The shelter announced it added a facial recognition tool to its website to help families reconnect with lost pets. The tool uses upload, uploaded photos of cats and dogs and determines if they are in the shelter or with someone who may have adopted the animal recently. So anyone who has a lost pet is encouraged to use the tool. You can find it on the shelter's website. Also trending on KSAT.com, Queer Eye announced it will continue filming in Austin after the show was delayed last year because of the pandemic. The cast says they are excited to step into their cowboy boots once again. You can read all these stories and so much more. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 822, 61 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! Go Spurs, go! Big win against the Pistons. Now, the Spurs taking on New Orleans Pelicans tonight. We're going to break it down. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend and go Spurs, go San Antonio Spurs in New Orleans tonight. They're able to pull off a huge win. Second game of the back-to-back, -back, taking on the Detroit Pistons. Derek White, the man of the hour, leading the Spurs 26 points. So here's the story. DeMar DeRozan, Patty Mills, DeJounte Murray, they all sat out. So obviously Derek White picked everyone up, put them on their back. And obviously, you know, they're Keldon Johnson. But here's the man of the show, Derek White, a little floater action. We had Lonnie Walker the fourth. That's not him. That's still Derek White because he had so many highlights in the game from the corner. That's a three. All right, so it was part of a 13-1 to run in the fourth quarter, pulled away from Detroit basketball. That included a huge momentum swing dunk by Keldon Johnson. There you see. Hugs needed it. It was 106-91 victory. 26 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, 3 blocks, and a steal. So, there you go. Big win, but don't worry. Spurs now sitting at 500. Need to stay above 500. Well, they really don't need to, but they do need to beat the New Orleans Pelicans. Only sitting about three and a half games above the Pelicans. So, you need that win tonight, 7 o'clock. And yes, Saracosta, the name of the stadium is the Smoothie King Arena. What a good name. What a good name. Good name for a good win. 826, 61 degrees out. Well, seven deputies are on administrative leave after the deadly shooting of Andrew Brown in North Carolina. Coming up, demonstrators are demanding answers. And after the break, when Derek Chauvin is expected to be sentenced after being convicted of killing George Floyd. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 8.30 this morning, Saturday, April 24th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us, and it is a gorgeous day, a gorgeous start to the weekend, a big difference from what we saw yesterday. Yeah, after all that rain, I told y'all earlier, <laughs> I knew it was raining, I even took a video while it was mm -hmm. raining, but I had left my car window rolled down, and Sarah Spivey, as I was driving into work, I heard some sloshing <laughs> in my car, and I don't even want to look at the amount of rain I got <laughs> inside. I, I'm, I feel for you, Sarah, but yeah, we got about seven tenths of an inch of rain at the airport. Now, some people unfortunately did miss out on the rain, but a large majority of us did see some good rain and we need need that rain. Extreme drought conditions out there. Stage two water restrictions. 
So yes, we'll take the rain, even though it did come with a severe thunderstorm warning in the afternoon yesterday. Uh, we'll talk more about which areas saw hail yesterday. Now, as far as temperatures go, it's nice and cool out there. It's uh, 59 degrees at the airport right now. It's 52 in Kerrville, 63 in Rock Springs, 59 in Carrizo Springs, a little bit more muggy across the central plain, uh, pardon me, across the coastal plains here. Beeville and Victoria at 71 degrees, and there's still some pretty high humidity from here. Houston to Victoria to Beeville to Corpus Christi. And because of that, there are some areas of fog. Even Gonzalez and Pleasanton visibility has been limited. But here in San Antonio, it's nice and dry and the sun is shining. And this weekend is going to be a perfect weekend for outdoor activities. I know we've got a lot going on this time of year on the weekend, soccer games, just wanting to spend some time outdoors with your family and friends. Today, breezy, pleasant and warm. 87 is warm, but the humidity will be low. Tomorrow morning, we'll be waking up in the 50s and it'll be nice in the afternoon toward 90 degrees. But again, low humidity this weekend. I'll be back to talk about those areas that saw some hail. And of course, we'll talk about our next shot at rain coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. In your morning headlines, a Minnesota court setting a June sentencing date for Derek Chauvin convicted of murder and manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. So according to online court records, Chauvin will be sentenced on June 16th at 1.30 in the afternoon. Under Minnesota law, Chauvin will only be sentenced on the most serious charge, which in this case is second degree murder. The maximum time he would face is 30 years, but he could get less. The governor of North Carolina is now calling for transparency, transparency from law enforcement and the release of police body cam video in the shooting death of Andrew Brown. That's right. Seven sheriff's deputies placed on leave after Brown was killed on Wednesday while authorities were attempting to serve an arrest warrant. ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has a story. Overnight, demonstrators taking to the streets in protest and after days of outrage. <laughs> Elizabeth City, North Carolina, is officially requesting that local law enforcement release body camera footage in the police shooting of Andrew Brown Jr. Law enforcement on scene, advising shots fired, need EMS, here's on tech three with EMS. The emergency city council meeting coming after seven officers involved in the shooting are placed on administrative leave. If any of my deputies broke any laws or violated any policies that come out through this investigation, they will be held accountable. Throughout the week, protesters have been demanding answers in the deadly incident, which took place at Brown's rental home. Authorities claiming they were trying to carry out an arrest warrant for felony drug charges. Mr. Brown was a convicted felon with a history of resistant arrest. Our training and our policies indicate under such circumstances, there is a high risk of danger. But at the time of the attempted arrest, it seems the 42-year-old tried to flee and police opened fire. Special advice, Ian Nelson's got one male, 42 years of age, gunshot to the back. Brown's neighbor, who says she saw the shooting, says he didn't pose a threat. He was nonviolent. I can, anybody that knew him would tell you that. Now, tension is rising, with many demonstrators asking why police opened fire when a suspect was fleeing. He was driving away. Why did y'all let off on him like that? And we are also learning that three sheriff's deputies have resigned, but the sheriff's office tells ABC News that those resignations are not related to the shooting. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And Jelaine Maxwell, who was Jeffrey Epstein's associate, pleading not guilty to new charges. Maxwell pleaded not guilty to sex trafficking, tra sex trafficking conspiracy and a sex trafficking charge that were added in a rewritten indictment filed last month. Now, her lawyers maintain that they need months of additional preparation because of the new charges. The move will most likely get her July 12th trial date pushed back once again. Nonprofits in San Antonio say they're having a hard time helping those in need because of the pandemic. In, the, in this case, Habitat for Humanity builds have been slower due to the rise in material costs, less donations, and less help. Well, thanks to help from corporate sponsors. This morning, a family of five will soon be getting what they have been hoping for, the keys to their very own home. Elisa Barrera joining us live in Von Ormy with more on what Habitat for Humanity needs and how you can help out. Good morning. We'll take a look at this. This is what it starts out like the slab of concrete and then the volunteers already working uh, with the foundation and then to your left over here in just a few hours, 
to your left, Stephen, over here is where that's actually what the house is going to look like uh, more like that during the end of the day. But what they need are donations and they need volunteers. And usually it's about 30 people. Today it's 20 and most are from the CPA firm ATKG. Taryn Grader, she's one of the owners for ATKG. Taryn, I'll have you stand over here. Why is it so important to get involved? And you say that the company has been active for 40 years. And this is probably one of the biggest projects. Well, I mean, San Antonio, with COVID and everything going on in San Antonio, it was just so important this year to really help out the community and, um, you know, help others. It's just, we needed to do it and our people wanted to do it and we're super excited to be participating. And what does it take? Uh, obviously a lot of commitment, but there are other factors involved to be here today and to keep coming out. Well, there's a financial contribution that's asked of the corporate donors. Um, and then, you know, we've had about 30 volunteers come and help out to build the houses on a couple of different days. So one of the things that a Habitat for Humanity, it makes it so special is that these families actually have to get involved yeah. and that, you know, put in some sweat. You actually met one of the homeowners today. What's that feeling like? What was that conversation like? Oh, it was quick, but because um, we had a house to build. But, um, you know, she's, you know, super grateful for everybody's help. Um, it's just really exciting to me, the person that will actually, you know, be here with their children, know that you're helping somebody have a home that they can, you know, lay their head in every night, no mortgage. It's just amazing. Karen, thank you so much. Okay. So again, about 20, 30 volunteers happening today, uh, making this possible today. Uh, we'll be sticking around later on this morning. We'll actually be able to meet one of the home buyers who, again, in about two months is when they'll be able to receive the keys to their home. Reporting live, Ivana Army, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Time now is 837, 62 degrees out. Well, ahead of the Oscar Awards, we are getting a preview of some of the top nominated films. A look into Sound of Metal, that's coming up. And one week left until the 2021 city election. Next, a breakdown of Prop B and what it could mean for you. 62 degrees out there at 838. The sun is out, shaping up to be a beautiful day. Sarah Spivey saying even a little bit less humidity today. She'll have her full forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. A new episode of KSAT Explains is out now. And this week, the team has a lot to break down. That's right, Proposition B, it's a measure on the ballot for San Antonio voters that pits the local police union against a group of activists pushing for police reform. Meyer Arthur has a preview. One side argues it's about police accountability. The other side argues it's about defunding police. Neither argument is nearly that simple. Proposition B would repeal the right for the local police union to collectively bargain their contracts that determine officer pay, benefits, and discipline with the city of San Antonio. But we found that there are a lot of arguments for and against that proposition that really need some clarification. Prop B has been hotly debated over the last few months and claims thrown out by both sides can be a bit misleading at times. So we break down what Proposition B would and wouldn't do, how other cities across Texas negotiate the pay for their officers, what their officer retention rate is like, the crime rate in San Antonio compared to other cities that may not have collective bargaining. We lay out what you need to know to understand the implications of Prop B, what would and would not happen if it actually passes. You can check out KSAT Explains right now, this latest episode so ksat.com slash explains or the ksat tv app we hope to clear up some misinformation and give you the facts that you need to know to decide how you will vote and you can stream the full episode right now on ksat.com or ksat tv app all right well it is only 8.43 in the morning, and we have seen the temperature continue to rise. The sun is out, not a cloud in the sky, at least not from the last live cam. It's yeah. going to be a gorgeous day. And Sarah, it, that picture behind you, completely different story what from what it is right now. Absolutely. This was last oh. night. All right, so this is in Campbellton, which is in southern Atascosa County, so south of Pleasanton, all right? Uh, and they got golf ball-sized hail in Campbellton. Not great there uh, to see those large hailstones. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we were under severe thunderstorm warning yesterday. Uh, we got anywhere from a few pea-sized hailstones to a few quarter-sized hailstones. So that severe thunderstorm warning was in effect. But overwhelmingly, this is the response that many people 
people have had. This is in New Braunfels, uh, and through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app, they say, I got an inch and a half in my backyard in New Braunfels, so grateful. And that's a great word there, grateful for the rain, because it has been very dry. Usually we see a good amount of rain in April, and we just haven't. In fact, yesterday, we were able to see seven-tenths of an inch of rain officially at the airport. That's the first time we've seen more than half an inch of rain since before the winter storm just to put that into perspective. So we needed this rain in areas. I'm glad we got some good rain. Uh, and meanwhile, behind that, it's, it's gonna be a beautiful day. Now, across parts of our coastal communities, we still do have some fog, like out toward Victoria and Beeville, where visibility is down to about three miles. But drier air is filtering in from the west and from the north, and so it feels great outside in San Antonio. A little bit more muggy out toward Pleasanton and Gonzales, but it still feels good. Very dry, though. Chapstick weather for Rock Springs and Del Rio. Those areas are gonna have to watch out for some elevated fire danger today with any kind of outdoor burning because the winds will pick up as well. Blue skies, totally blue skies out there. Hard to see a cloud in the sky. 59 degrees at the airport. Winds are from the west northwest at about 10 miles per hour and it's still 56 in Kerrville. Meanwhile, we're warming up to 66 in Bandera, 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield and 62 in New Braunfels. So if you're heading out right now, bring a light sweater with you, but you're going to quickly shrug that off in the afternoon because we're going to warm up very quickly. Wind Winds are starting to pick up from the north. Bernie Stage Airfield at about 15 miles per hour. And today we will continue to see wind gusts potentially up to 25 miles per hour. So a little breezy, but look in the high res future cast. You can't see any clouds out there because it's going to be a totally sunny day for us. Here's how it shapes up. If you want to enjoy some time outdoors, it's going to be a good day to do that. Even at 10, we'll already be at 66 degrees, 77 at noon and in the afternoon, 87 for the high temperature. Now that is warm, but Again, with low humidity, it's going to feel good outside all day long. Then quickly cooling after the sun sets at 8.06. And just a reminder, it will be breezy at times. Now looking ahead, nice and comfortable with low humidity tomorrow as well. In fact, the forecast is pretty much going to be a carbon copy from today to tomorrow. So beautiful weather all weekend long. But then notice how the humidity really spikes up by Tuesday and Wednesday. It is going to be downright humid outside on Tuesday and Wednesday. And those are the days that we'll be looking out for a few storms in the afternoon. It's that time of year where anytime we get storms, they could quickly become strong. So we're going to be watching out for that. And you can keep up with a forecast on the weather app where we'll send updates every single day. In fact, speaking of updates, I'm waiting on the pollen count. As soon as I get it in, I'll send it out on the app and we'll talk about it on air too. All right, fantastic. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 846, 62 degrees out. Well, after the break, a sneak peek of today's episode of Texas Eats. David Elder shares oh this appetizing menu items from Frida Mexican Restaurant. Oh, my goodness. That looks fantastic. Also fantastic are roadways. Nothing uh, too crazy going on out there. It is still early in the morning. It's beautiful out there, too. Yes. So if anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. Drive safe. Like the historical and eclectic artist Frida, the menu at the restaurant is diverse. Out here at Frida Mexican Restaurant, there is an assorted plate of mini tacos, and they're like mini, mini tacos, right? So you can try all of them and you won't be too full. Now there's a marlin, there's ribeye, al pastor, and there's also sarero. Now this right here, this is the al pastor. That's like my favorite kind of little mini taco you can get. It has a little bit of sauce on the side as well. And you have some papas there in the middle, a little bit of lime. You know what though? You got lime, you gotta use it, okay? That's just the way it goes. So you get your lime right onto the top. <laughs> That's a juicy lime. The texture on the outside has a nice little bit of, like a little char to it from the grill, but then you get that roasted pineapple on there as well. The acidity cuts through a lot of that fat, so you're getting a well-rounded bite, but then you have the tortilla, which is a great little mechanism for all this flavor. I mean, that's a home run. You should get another shot of that slow-mo of his, his, his bite reaction. I loved it. We love you, David. Yeah, all right, 851, <laughs> 62 degrees out.
The Academy Awards are tomorrow, and next we take a look at some of those movie nominations. Good morning and welcome back. Ahead of the Academy Awards, we take a look at a rock drummer who suddenly loses his hearing. The film Sound of Metal has six Oscar nominations. CNN's Rick Damagella gives us a preview. Riz Ahmed stars as a drummer whose hearing disappears in an instant in Sound of Metal. Your hearing is deteriorating rapidly. We'll come back. Till then, Lou, we just keep going, okay? No. As you can see and hear from the film footage, Sound of Metal goes to great lengths to immerse the audience. We did actually use some inverted hearing aids that were placed into my ear canal and switched into a white noise setting. And what that meant is um, I couldn't, I just wanted to know what it was like to not even be able to hear yourself speak. And it was very disorienting and very humbling and, um, very visceral. I can't hear you. Do you understand me? I can't. I'm deaf. That was a seven and a half, half month process where I moved to New York and um, would do um, several hours every day of learning American Sign Language. And then similarly with, with the drums, it was every day with my teacher. <laughs> learning the drums is about learning to kind of let the drums play you. Um, you know, you can't think your way to for playing that stuff, you, you kind of have to let it work through you. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Time now is 8.55, 62 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA at 9, free admission for Texas and teachers and preschoolers at SeaWorld. Details on how you can sign up for this limited time deal. Plus, we're checking back with Alicia Brera, hearing about how organizers with Habitat for Humanity are changing lives here in our community. That's next on Good Morning San Antonio. Good morning and happy Saturday. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 63 degrees, a gorgeous shot of San Antonio. What is the rest of the morning? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning and welcome back. 9 o'clock, almost 9 o'clock this Saturday, April 24th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. We have a little bit of time, so anyone who missed it this morning, please explain the whole car situation. Oh, <laughs> I... It poured yesterday. I was aware of it. I even took a video of it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware, however, as one of my passenger windows of my car was down for that entire oh, no. downpour. It's because my dog Scooby, he mm. likes to have the window down when we <laughs> get in He courteously the, asked He you. said, please put your, the window down for me. And I said, of course. Well, I didn't roll it back up. So mm. I'm having a, a potential mildew situation <laughs> in my car. Sarah, as and long as you don't <laughs> blame me for that. I'm it, it's, it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you know what? Overwhelmingly, we are grateful for yesterday's rain that we saw around San Antonio, mainly for areas along and east of I-35. It did come with a severe thunderstorm warning, and that storm did produce some pockets of hail. It's 68 degrees outside right now here in San Antonio, so the temperatures are warming up really quickly. 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 61 in Kerrville. It's 69 in New Braunfels, already 70 degrees at Stinson. Now looking at the humidity and the dew points, notice this boundary here. It's much drier at the airport, dew points in the 40s, and at Stinson, dew points are in the 50s. Down in Pleasanton, dew points are in the 60s. A dry line and a boundary are moving through, and it's going to allow for beautiful dry air today. And so even though, yes, it's going to get warm, the humidity will stay low. You know, yesterday was rainy for a good portion of the day. It may have been difficult for you and your pup to get out uh, for a walk. We were speaking of Scooby earlier. Here's Scooby's forecast. Dog walking forecast in San Antonio will be warming up 72 and sunny at 10 at noon. We'll be at 78 degrees and in the afternoon it will be pretty warm 89 at 4 p.m. That's when it's going to be its warmest. Of course, that pavement really heats up pretty quickly. But other than that, it's going to be a great day for you and your pup to spend some time outdoors. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to recap how much rain we saw around the KSAT 12 viewing area. We'll also talk about our next chance for rain around the corner. Sarah? 
Thank you, Sarah. Well, now that the Johnson and Johnson pause has been lifted, Metro Health says it has 2300 doses ready to go into arms. While there have been no reported issues related to the vaccine here in San Antonio, the state is looking into one case. The Texas Department of State Health Services says the CDC notified them this week about a woman who was hospitalized after receiving her dose of Johnson and Johnson. For those hesitant about getting the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, Alex Mattingly of Metro Health says you still have the Pfizer and Moderna as other options. It's normal to feel hesitant and you can definitely find more information by talking to a pharmacist or your primary care provider, but we're confident that the vaccines are safe and they're really effective at preventing severe disease, which is important in our community. Metro Health says more than 25,000 people in Bear County have already received the J&J &J vaccine, and we have not heard of any of the blood clot side effects here. And to help people get vaccinated, Metro Health will be taking the efforts on the road tomorrow and Monday, and it's all going to be in the form of a mobile clinic. The event is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Antioch Sports Complex on the east side, and you can see the address here on your screen just off North Walters. Metro Health will also be administering the Pfizer vaccine to anyone 16 and older. Another mobile clinic is scheduled for Monday on the south side at Knights of Columbus Hall and on the west side at the New Life Christian Center. Now let's take a look at the coronavirus numbers here in Bear County. Local health officials are reporting 68 new COVID-19 cases with no new deaths. In our hospitals, 253 COVID-19 patients remain admitted. 89 patients are in the ICU and 44 are in ventilators. Well, a local organization working full steam ahead as it prepares to take over the care of children removed from homes by the state. St. Jude's Ranch for Children granted the contract to be the primary care provider for kids in Region 8B, which encompasses 27 counties outside of Bear County. Now, the agency has decades of experience as a foster care provider, but now it will be doing it for about 600 more children. This is all a part of lawmakers' efforts to privatize foster care in an order to better serve children across the state. Now, the agency says they're looking to hire and also partner with foster care families and church organizations. This way they can support more families. They know not everyone can sign up to be a foster parent, but they can help support families who do take on this task. We're really hoping to partner up with other agencies that are already there and bring services in. So using telehealth, telemedication, having a spot in those across the region where families can go and visit and, and work services to ultimately get their child back. The organization will go live with its first phase starting October 1st. So if you are a church or community organization in one of these 27 counties and you want to help out or if you're looking for a job, just head to ksat.com for the full link. We would also like to remind you that our KSAT and our community partners will be hosting a child abuse awareness town hall this month. It's happening next Wednesday on April 28th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. A panel of experts will join Isis Romero and, pa and Patty Santos to answer questions live and viewers can learn the signs of abuse, how to report it and where to seek help. You can read more about the town hall right now on ksatcommunity.com. Well, we know cities across the country and across the world are still dealing with the economic impact of the pandemic. The San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, well, they have been front and center to help our local economy. And recently, leaders of the chamber actually testified at the state capitol. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA, the Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Council Chair will be joining us live. We're going to be discussing the issues that affect our local economy, the current state of the Alamo City, and what comes next? So if you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. All right, well, happening today, actually happening right now, one family of five will soon get what they've been hoping for, the keys to their very own home. Although donations aren't as frequent and help from volunteers has been low due to the pandemic, Habitat for Humanity is hopeful the community won't forget about the big need for housing right here in Bear County. All right, so Elisa Barrett joining us live in Von Ormy with a Habitat for Humanity home buyer with more on what this process has been like during these tough times. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Well, we always love hearing those stories of the people who are directly impacted by the goodness of our community. So Habitat, have, Habitat for Humanity volunteers have really been helping. You can see they're already working hard, putting up the basics for this home. And the home buyer, she's a single mom of four, and they're going to be moving in here in hopefully about two months. Uh, and Elisa joins me live now. You say you started this process in January. You've already put in so many hours of sweat equity. How many? About 300 already. And why is that so important? So 300, my goodness, I can't even do the math, but that's a lot of time since January in such little time. Why have you been so committed uh, for this home? Because I'm lo really looking forward to a permanent home for my kids. I'm tired of moving them around, uh, apartments, my mom's here and there, and this will be stable for all of them, big rooms. Uh, enough for we're work from I'm work from home and my kids are doing school from home so it'll be perfect and just take a look right now already when we got here this morning there was nothing and then now there's something there's what's the, there's walls yeah what's that feeling just seeing all this kind of come together super exciting I just want to cry I never thought I'd be here yeah. and you're here you're here and she tells me that her her children have also come out here and taken a look and maybe the older one will be able to help uh, but just what's your what's your message for the community? Those people who are probably sitting at home right now and thinking, hey, I would like to go volunteer and help families like in the Lisa. Come out, volunteer. It's amazing. It's super amazing to see all these people out here. They're not getting paid. They're helping us build these homes for people like me. Well, we're very excited. I can tell you're emotional. This is a big deal for you and your family. Thank you so much for sharing part of your story with Thank us. You. Thank you. So again, in about... Um, two months is when these home buyers are going to start receiving their keys. So three homes in this lot right now. Again, we'll be sticking around here at Habitat, Hab Habitat for Humanity and Vaughn Army uh, with more on these stories. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Time now is 9.08, 63 degrees out. A local ice cream snack shop makes wild Oreo desserts. Still ahead, David Elder gives us a sneak peek of today's episode of Texas Eats. Plus, free admission to SeaWorld all season long for Texas teachers and preschoolers where you can sign up. And when is the deadline? We'll explain. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 65 degrees outside, shaping up to be a beautiful day. Sarah Spivey is so excited about this. She's dancing. She's dancing about today's weather and the rain we got from last night. <laughs> have our forecast when we come back. Well, if you've got kiddos five years old and younger, you can get free admission to SeaWorld. That's right. So it goes the whole 2021 season with a preschool card. So the SeaWorld preschool card allows unlimited admissions to the park, and that includes annual events like the Sesame Street party parades, the Halloween spooktacular, and the Christmas celebration, which allows visitors to take photos with Santa Claus. Santa! This is very cool. <laughs> Certified pre-K through 12th grade teachers with an active teacher ID can also get, on, get in on the freebie with the teacher card. You must register online to get one. To, the offer ends April 30th and is available to Texas residents only. For more information, you can click on this article on KSAT.com. All right, Sarah Spivey, yesterday we had some rain. Yeah, this we did. This morning, it's beautiful. Nice and sunny this morning, but we did get some good rain. I want to show you guys the rainfall totals from yesterday. Unfortunately, many folks west of I-35 missed out on healthy rainfall, but a good chunk of us got some good rain. Seguin got a little bit more than an inch of rainfall down in Pleasanton, 39 hundredths of an inch of rain. Kennedy, 30 hundredths of an inch of rain in Victoria, a little bit more than an inch and a quarter at the airport. Uh, about 69 hundredths officially yesterday from the rain, both in the morning and again that storm in the afternoon. And we'll go ahead and zoom into a neighborhood view here. And I want to show you that the downtown area got almost a whole inch of rainfall at JBSA Randolph, a little bit more than an inch of rain. Leon Valley, 74 hundredths of an inch of rainfall. And up in Bulverde, 42 hundredths. Meanwhile, Martindale more than two inches of rain and in Seguin more than an inch and almost an inch and a half in New Braunfels. Unfortunately, you can see very clearly that areas like Bernie, Medina Lake, Holotus just did not see the rain that we got around downtown San Antonio and points to the east. Now, of course, with that rain that moved 
through San Antonio did come with a severe thunderstorm warning. It did drop pea size, a penny sized hail rather out in Leon Valley and near the downtown area. There were some reports of up to quarter sized hailstones, uh, but the Edwards Aquifer, which we are under stage two water restrictions because of the lower level of the Edwards Aquifer. You can see that not much rain fell on that recharge zone apart from the rain that fell in Hayes and in Comal counties. So we'll have to watch and see if we were able to see that number go up at all at the aquifer. But again, stage two water restrictions are in effect as well as extreme drought. Thank goodness we saw some rain around the area. Meanwhile, you can see very clearly where that system is currently working its way across the Mississippi River, and there are still some tornado watches for parts of Georgia and Florida as well as Alabama as that low continues to move off to the east. Meanwhile, in its wake, drier air moving in from the north. It's cool up in the panhandle this morning in the 40s in Amarillo, but it's fairly warm still across the coastal communities out toward Houston, 78 degrees, 73 in Corpus Christi, 74 in Beeville. But here in San Antonio, we were able to start off in the 50s. We're already warming up at 68 degrees, 61 in Kerrville and 63 in Rock Springs. We have got some dry air inching in around San Antonio. Dew points have fallen into the 40s. So today we're going to have low humidity all day long. It's going to feel great outside, but it will get a little warm in the afternoons because we'll see total sunshine and that's going to allow our temperatures to warm up even more from where they're at. We'll be close to around the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees here in San Antonio. Meanwhile, it'll be 93 in Del Rio, 92 in Eagle Pass, 94 for the high increase of Springs and 96 in Catula. So let me take you through the forecast for us here in San Antonio today, 72 at 10, sunny, low humidity, 78 at noon, 89 for the high temperature, definitely warm, but that low humidity will still make it feel nice. It'll be breezy at times with winds from the north gusting up to about uh, 25 miles per hour. Then tomorrow, we'll pretty much have a carbon copy forecast, waking up in the 50s, topping off near 90 degrees with total sunshine tomorrow as well. And then in the week ahead, we'll have an upper level low pressure system moving in from the west. We're going to slowly see our humidity rise by Tuesday. It'll be downright humid and on Tuesday and Wednesday we'll have the opportunity for some more storms. Right now the chance for storms on Tuesday and Wednesday only 30 percent. So a small chance there and of course some of those storms could be on the stronger side given uh, the time of year it is and how we usually see some strong severe storms uh, on this time of year like we did yesterday. But again, those are the only chances for rain in the forecast over the next seven days. It's going to be low humidity until Tuesday, but then you'll really feel that humidity in the middle of the week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 916, 65 degrees out. Well, delivery driver is being hailed a hero this morning after he saved a child from a heavy package. Let's take a look at that video that's ahead. Well, it's a new episode of Texas Eats, Aaron, this morning at 10 a.m. Take a look at this breakfast of champions. I'm not even sure what is going it's on. too much. <laughs> what? Never enough. <laughs> David Elder is going to explain in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. Sarah, what happens on Saturdays? What happens on Saturdays, Max? We get to talk <laughs> Texas seats, and we've been showing previews throughout the morning, but right now is the final sneak peek from today's episode. It's making me hungry. All right, this time we are going to see how a local ice cream snack shop makes a wild Oreo dessert. Take a look. Cookies and cream ice cream gets added to a blender with ice cold milk. Then, a glass gets rimmed with vanilla cake icing and crushed up Oreos. The shake gets poured into the glass and gets topped with an ice cream sandwich, a scoop of cookies and cream ice cream, whipped cream, Oreo cookies, crushed Oreo cookies, and chocolate syrup. This right here is the Oreo overload. Hey, it's cookies and cream milkshake. You got Oreos on top. You have a cookie sandwich ice cream bar and the inside of this thing. Here we go, take a little bite off the top. Try some of the shake. <laughs> if you love Oreos, this is like an Oreo dream. I think he had brain freeze. So, several things. <laughs> One, I always get brain freeze eating ice cream. I, I can't do it. Two, you weren't a fan of that. Well, that's not the 
it's just, I was getting brain freeze and mm. it's just a lot. Virtual brain freeze. Yes. All right, time now, 921, 66 degrees out. Okay, drones form a working QR code. Whoa. Oh. In the sky. Oh, jinx. And a delivery driver saves a child from a heavy package. Coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. High tech became high flying as an aerial drone. Well, it, here we go. This is, this is a lot to digest. It was a drone show <laughs> that turned interactive, and it was really unique. It's very cool. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Get ready to freak the geek out at this amazing aerial drone show that culminated with a massive mid-air QR code that actually worked. The show took place in the night skies of Shanghai and dazzled spectators with images of a giant mobile phone and video game characters. Makes sense since the show was put on to promote a popular mobile game. The aerial display turned interactive when the drones formed a giant QR code that when scanned took spectators directly to the game's website. Twitter was all a Twitter with some some marveling at the high-flying, high-tech wizardry, and others decrying it as a step in the wrong direction. And liftoff. Eyes were on the skies in Florida as four astronauts took flight aboard a recycled rocket headed for the ISS. The launch marked the first time a previously used SpaceX capsule and rocket booster has carried astronauts. The four crew members hail from three different countries and will spend six months aboard the ISS. And while that package sat ready for launch, this one was on a kid. Ah, help! A delivery worker had just dropped off a large package at an Illinois home when a four-year-old boy came out to get it. The nearly 100-pound package tipped and started to fall on the child. The driver quickly reversed course and sprinted back to rescue the boy, who along with his parents were able to later meet and thank the heroic driver virtually. You are our angel. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Poor little guy. Oh, I'm glad he's okay, but yeah. I mean, that was quick thinking. I know, so scary. All right, 926, 68 degrees out. Well, just ahead on GMSA at 930, a big accomplishment for space exploration. What we now know about the recycled SpaceX capsule arrival at the International Space Station. Plus, President Biden hosting more than 40 global leaders virtually at the White House for a two-day summit on climate change. Details on what President Biden is telling leaders and what he has disagreements about. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 9.30 this morning, April 24th. Yesterday, did you see the rain? I saw the rain, I got video of the rain. I even bought a rain gauge, Sarah Spivey. I was wow. so excited, but it didn't measure enough rain because I put it in too late. And I don't know about this, but do you have it under a tree? I don't. Okay. It's, it's, it's in a wide open space. That's where you put it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good job. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> we were able to see quite a bit of rain in some spots, especially along and east of I-35. The airport officially, we got uh, close to seven tenths of an inch of rain. The first time we've had more than half an inch of rain since before the winter storm. So uh, some really nice rainfall yesterday for many folks. Here's how it affected the pollen count. Molds have gone up. They're moderate at 830. Oak is also up and it's moderate at 470. Pecan is present, but it is low. So we have seen the mold and the oak go up, but at least we're not seeing anything in the high category. So that's some good news there. Now winds are starting to pick up from the north and from the northwest. We're seeing wind gusts of up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. A boundary is currently pushing through, allowing for drier air to move on in. Dew points are still in the 60s in Pleasanton, but 20 degrees cooler and drier in San Antonio with dew points in the 40s and even in the 30s up at Bernie Stage Airfield. This is going to allow us to be warm today. Low humidity will allow our temperature to rise, but it'll feel really pleasant outside with the low humidity and it's totally sunny out there as you know. 66 in Bandera, 66 in Bulverde, 69 in New Braunfels and it's almost 70 degrees in Castroville. So looking at your weekend, pretty much a carbon copy uh, today and tomorrow. We're going to have pleasant warm weather. It'll be near 90 degrees every afternoon after cool mornings, but again, low humidity is our friend. Coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about some areas that saw some hail yesterday and look ahead to storm chances later on in the week. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to politics. President Joe Biden expected to mark a dark anniversary by becoming the first United States president to officially recognize the Armenian genocide.
ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks is on the North Lawn with that, mo that and more about the president's agenda. This week, the president deeply engaged in diplomacy, hosting more than 40 global leaders virtually here at the White House for his climate summit. The president telling start, even leaders that he has big, start, dis big disagreements with that he hopes they can come together climate on climate, climate change. change. The president yesterday had a moment where he found himself agreeing with Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. We've heard Biden call Putin a killer. Yesterday, he said he liked an idea that Putin was pitching about countries coming together to develop new technologies around carbon capture capturing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, outside of the summit, we're also tracking reports that the president is considering formally recognizing the Armenian genocide. This would be a big deal. President Biden would be the first American president to formally recognize the killing of Armenians 100 years ago during World War I by the Ottoman Empire as a genocide. His predecessors have avoided using that word because they don't want to risk antagonizing Turkey, which is a strategic NATO ally that rejects that label. And we don't know how Turkey would respond if the president does, in fact, make this announcement. We know that President Biden spoke with Turkey's president, Erdogan. You see him there for the first time since taking office. They spoke yesterday. And, and this week, the White House is also announcing the president's first foreign trip. The president is going to head to the U.K. and Belgium to attend the G7 and NATO summit in June. And that was Mary Alice Parks reporting. The Indonesian Navy is now officially saying the submarine that disappeared last Tuesday has sank. Now, the Navy changed the state of the submarine from submiss to subsank this morning. The Indonesian Navy Chief of Staff says they now expect to carry out an evacuation process to recover the submarine and its crew once they find the exact location. Debris found floating this morning was discovered about two miles from the spot where the sub initially started to die before it disappeared. So far, no crew members have been found. A recycled SpaceX capsule carrying four astronauts has arrived at the International Space Station a day after launching from Florida. The Dragon capsule docked with the orbiting outpost yesterday. This is SpaceX's third crew flight, but the first to use a vehicle that's flown before. All right, well, back here on Earth, back here in the Alamo City, a lot happening, not only in and around San Antonio, but the entire state as well. First up in the list is emergency supplies for tax-free weekend. Today until Monday, Texans will have no sales tax and no quantity limits on supplies that can be deemed vital during a natural disaster. The tax break also applies to online purchases. Shipping charges are included as part of the price of the item. Items include things like portable generators, hurricane shutters, emergency ladders, batteries, fire extinguishers. Items not qualified, this is important, things that you're not gonna get tax refund. Well, that is masks, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, or plywood, although no quantity limits. There are price ceilings on items like the price gener or portable generators. They have to cost less than $3,000 to qualify. Now you can find the full list and all the answers to any questions you may have. Just head to KSAT.com. Also happening today, the San Antonio Water System is teaming up with the Food Bank to help gather donations for families in need. They're holding a drive through food collection event today from 9 a.m. to noon. It's at SAW's headquarters in the customer service parking lot. They need canned food and non-perishables like peanut butter, cereal, beans, and rice. And the city of Lytle is holding an auction today from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it has already begun. It's happening at the police station. That is at 15245 Hester Street. Items being auctioned are miscellaneous surplus and abandoned items by Lytle Police Department and old public works trucks. Now, only cash is going to be accepted. There are items ranging from clothes to those trucks. And the city reserves all rights to reject any and all bids that they receive. Our community is still dealing with the negative effects of the pandemic. Nonprofits are no exceptions as less donations are coming in. And frankly, a lot of nonprofits don't have enough help from volunteers. And although in a very tough situation, Habitat for Humanity is committed to their mission of building homes for those in need. Our Alicia Barrera is live in Von Ormy with more on what's needed to meet Habitat for Humanity's goal. Good morning, Alicia. 
Good morning. Well, the big thing we've talked about it are volunteers. That's the big push this morning as well as sponsors. So big donations because a lot of work has to be done. Stephanie Weiss, she's with me live. She's a vice president of Habitat for Humanity. You tell me 2020 was like the year of growth, or at least that was what the plan was. 51 houses and y'all kind of stuck with that goal this year. Why is that? We did. We really don't have the, the normal level of volunteers back yet. Uh, volunteers and funding. So we're really in need of that. We usually have about 15,500 uh, volunteers a year and we're about half of that. So uh, yeah, we, we want more people on these houses. And on a smaller scale, so you get the idea of how many volunteers usually are at these sites a day. You tell me about 30, but right now it's sitting at about 20, correct? Correct. Yeah, to, to keep it safe uh, and to keep people spaced, we have about 20 per house right now that, that we'll allow. And so corporate sponsors are really needed. Those donations need to keep coming in. And one way so we can better understand why is just the price of these materials has gone up so much. How have y'all experienced that? So the price of materials has skyrocketed, the cost of shipping, supply chain demand, it's all been a challenge. A couple examples, uh, two by fours are usually $1.75. They're now about $7 a piece. We put hundreds of two by fours in our houses. So that's really a challenge. And, and really with the community, uh, we can get the support to build homes with families. Stephanie, thank you so much. And although it is tough for Habitat Humanity and then other nonprofits because of the pandemic and all the problems it's brought along, they're really sticking to that goal. So 51 houses being built here this year 2021 that's the big goal but again in order to stay on track they really do need the help specifically from volunteers reporting live from von army alicia barrera ksat 12 news thank you alicia 939 68 degrees out well film scores have become an important part of the movie experience and a new study put on bond put movie soundtracks to the test tomorrow on gmsa the best music in cinema in which movie soundtrack has most list has been listened to the most on a daily basis and the film promising young woman may have an impact on viewers on tomorrow's oscars coming up we are hearing from the film's creator and its star who have four academy award nominations look at that i'm learning so much about the awards this morning i know 68 degrees outside, beautiful Saturday. Sarah Spivey saying we have a beautiful weekend ahead of us. She'll give us the details when we come back. Welcome back. Whether you view it as a dark comedy or revenge thriller, Promising Young Women definitely had an impact on viewers. And Sunday night, it could have an impact at the Oscars. That's right. David Daniel talked with the film's creator and its star, who between them have four Academy Award nominations. Please lay down. What are you doing? It's okay, okay. you're safe. What are you doing? Hey, I said, what are you doing? Carrie Mulligan wages war on predatory men in Promising Young Woman. Every week, I go to a club. I act like I'm too drunk to stand. And every week, a nice guy comes over to see if I'm okay. You okay? I'm a nice guy. Are you? Mulligan was writer-director Emerald Fennell's first choice for the role. This film, because it is a bit of a genre-bending thing, because it's dealing with such delicate material, I guess, you know, politically at least, needed someone who was going to be real at the center. I just wanted to do it. <laughs> it was really that simple. I just read it and hadn't read anything like it. Cassandra takes on everyone complicit in rape culture. What would you have me do? Ruin a young man's life? If you have a reputation for sleeping around, then maybe people aren't going to believe you when you say something's happened. Fennell feels the power of the piece is that, as in life, everyone thinks they're a good person. This is a movie about good people waking up and being told by someone, a stranger, that they're not good. And there's proof that they're not good. That's, you know, an incredibly frightening prospect for all of us. It's every guy's worst nightmare getting accused like that. Really? <laughs> Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, Mulligan is up for Best Actress on Sunday night, and Fennell has three nominations, Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay. She won the Screenplay Award at this week's Independent Spirit Awards, and Mulligan won Best Female Lead. All right, so there are plenty of iconic movie scenes throughout Hollywood's history. 
But there are also many film fans who can recognize their favorite flicks just by the movie soundtrack. So according to a new survey on studyfinds.org conducted by one poll, Harry Potter, Titanic, and Inception mm. topped the charts as the three most recognizable film scores of all time. So when it comes to the most iconic movie themes of all time, West Side Story and Gone with the Wind, finishing high on the list, Psycho and Star Wars also finishing in the top 10. The study showed 45% of respondents say they listen to movie soundtracks during the day, but the huh. most popular film score listed on a daily basis was the Inception soundtrack. Now, while movie scores may be recognizable, researchers say people have trouble knowing what soundtracks belong to certain movies. Sarah Spivey. One that I think is missing on there, mm -hmm. the Jurassic Park one. Oh. Do, 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 yeah, there you go. Do, do. Instantly recognizable. Or how about... Do, 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 do. Well, that was on there yeah, already. On it's my there. favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite. Oh my goodness. Well, hey guys, we got some good rain yesterday, didn't we? Many areas saw about half an inch to an inch of rainfall, especially along and east of I-10, but unfortunately, along and east of I-35 rather, but unfortunately, down in southern Atascosa County in Campbellton, you can see golf ball sized hail down there. Now we did have a severe thunderstorm warning that rolled through San Antonio, producing some isolated quarter sized hailstones, mainly pin need a quarter size hail but according to most people we were just really grateful for the rain this uh, sent in through our ksat connect fe feature on our weather app this person says i got an inch and a half of rain in my backyard at new Braunfels. so grateful yes many of us thankful for the rain because extreme drought conditions are out there and on top of that we're under stage two water restrictions just check the aquifer level and the aquifer is actually up six tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours so that's some good news there uh, but the 10 day average is still below that 650 number that puts us into stage two water restrictions We'll continue to monitor the aquifer, and of course, we give updates on the aquifer every single day here on KSAT and on KSAT.com. Looking at the humidity tracker, dew points are uh, pretty low around San Antonio, New Braunfels, Hondo, Yavaldi, and Carrizo Springs. We've got a dry line and a boundary here trying to push on through. Uh, you can see that's still pretty muggy down in Pleasanton and Kennedy where dew points are in the 60s. Uh, but here in San Antonio, we're going to enjoy low humidity all day long. Total sunshine too. And we've been able to warm up by 12 degrees already. Our morning low was 57 and we're already at 68. Winds are from the northwest at about 12 miles per hour, starting to pick up and seeing some gusts of up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. It is going to be a breezy day, too, with those winds from the north. Meanwhile, it's 69 in Kerrville, 68 in Bandera, 68 in Bulverde, 64 in Hondo, and 70 at Stinson. Uh, temperatures, as I've mentioned, are already on the rise, and we're going to continue to see them rise today. Uh, wind uh, sustained at 15 miles per hour, are in Kerrville and gusts up to 25 to 30 are possible. Look at the high res future cast. Hard to tell that this is a loop, uh, but it is. It's just not showing anything because we're going to have total sunshine today. And as a result of that, warming up really nicely. So here's the forecast for your Saturday. We'll already be at 78 degrees at noon. At Two will be at 85 and then in the afternoon 89 for the high temperature. So it is going to be a warm day, but with the low humidity, it should feel great outside still. Nonetheless, especially in the shade sunsets at 806 and our temperatures fall back down into the 60s by midnight. Occasional gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. Looking ahead tomorrow, humidity is going to be low as well. We're pretty much going to have a carbon copy day tomorrow. Where we'll start off in the 50s, top off near 90 degrees, and then by Tuesday and Wednesday, notice how humid it gets. Dew points are going to be close to 70 degrees on those days. It's going to feel very humid, a lot like yesterday afternoon after that first round of rain moved through. And speaking of rain, Tuesday and Wednesday, we do have a chance for isolated storms in the afternoon. Uh, it's a little bit of a messy weather pattern on those days, so we'll continue to keep you updated. But again, the biggest no thing you'll notice, the difference is for the low humidity this weekend and the humid weather by Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 949, 70 degrees out. 70 degrees out, wow. Climbing. <laughs>
All right, so there is no Mega Millions winner last night. The jackpot is now at 297 million. But first, let's take a look at your pick three numbers. 258, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 9564, Fireball 5. Cash 5, 1, 4, 6, 21, 30. And, you know, just for fun. Mega Millions numbers, 4, 28, 29, 30, 60, big number 25, Mega Pyre 3. Maybe you won like a million. There you go. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go. The Spurs in New Orleans tonight. They pulled off a big win in their second game of back-to-back -back against the Detroit Pistons. And once again, Derek White stepping up and stepping out, leading the Spurs 26 points. Important to mention, though, DeMar DeRozan, Patty Mills, DeJounte Murray all sitting this one out. Derek White took it upon himself, picking up the slack. Boom, Keldon Johnson throwing it down, throwing it back. And here we go, Derek White. We have so many highlights of Derek White throughout this game. He, Lonnie Walker, the fourth, really killing it. Now, they were able to go on a 13-1 to run in the fourth quarter, really pulling away from the Detroit Pistons. That included that huge dunk from Kelton Johnson we saw just a few moments ago. And they won big 106-91. to So, Derek White, 26 points, 8 assists, 7 boards, 3 blocks, and a steal. We call that a stat stuffer. I'm getting there. Yeah. Always room for improvement. So I want to just keep working, keep looking at what I can improve on, but we're getting there. And the Spurs got a lot of help from Jakob Podol. He was able to score 17 points, hauled in 11 rebounds, four blocks. He also survived the Pistons' hack a shack strategy against him. They really just foul him at the end of the game, see if he can hit his free throws. He averages about 47% from the stripe, but he was able to hit five of six and win the game. There he is, right there. Very strange strategy, but it is what it is. All right, so Spurs right now, 29 and 29. That is 500 for those who don't like to do math. And this evening, they take on the New Orleans Pelicans. Seven o'clock, Sarah, where? The Smoothie King Center. The Smoothie King Center. <laughs> I did it. There we go, all right. 9.55, 72 degrees out. Well, as Texans get to enjoy nature this spring and summer, you may come across a bird or other creature that has strayed from its nest. Tomorrow on GMSA, why Texas wildlife experts say you should stay away and look with your eyes, not with your hands. And the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce has been front and center helping out our local economy as we deal with the aftermaths of the pandemic. Recently, leaders of the chamber testified in the state capitol. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA, the Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Council chair will join us live. We're going to be discussing the issues that affect our local economy, the current state of the Alamo City, and what comes next. And of course, if you have any questions, please submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police need your help finding a man they say robbed a woman's car back on March 4th. Police say this man on your screen approached a woman waiting in her car near the corner of Highway 151 and Petranco Road around noon, asked her for the time and later carjacked her. If you have any information that can help lead to an arrest, you are asked to call that number on your screen. Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. A final look at the pollen count. Again, not too bad, but molds and oak have gone up. Mold is moderate at 830, oak is moderate at 470. And the pollen count, uh, again, looks okay, but today's weather is going to be pretty nice. We're going to warm up really quickly. 89 for the high with low humidity. And then in the seven-day forecast, again, another similar day tomorrow. Tomorrow with humidity returning by Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday we will be on the lookout for some isolated storms. Temperatures much warmer than last week when we were pretty cool on some of those days. I need to take advantage and wash the inside of my car. I think so. She left her window open during the rain. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Texas Eats starts right now. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around Central Texas looking for delicious restaurants you won't want to miss. We're getting an exclusive look at the all-new Spurs food truck. Our, our chef's wife is Venezuelan, so if he messed that dish up, he would have had other problems to deal with. <laughs> Plus, 
we're heading to Helotus to go inside a food truck serving up some wild churro desserts. There's a book. Girl, you know how to make a good churro. That is delicious. And the Botanical Garden is sharing fresh recipes from their garden you won't want to miss. It's fresh in the garden, so I mean... It tastes springy. Our first stop is at an iconic breakfast and brunch destination in San Antonio. Located off Broadway near 410 in San Antonio is one of the most iconic bakeries that you gotta check out. Let's go inside La Panaderia. Joining me now is David Caceres. He's the co-owner out here at La Panaderia and there is so much good food in front of me. This one right here is hitting me, but how long has the bakery been open? Uh, we opened in 2013. We started in the farmer's market, September 2014, and then we opened this location uh, April 2014. Wow, so I mean, like right after the farmer's market took right off, after, you jumped we, right into it. We were sold out every single Sunday at the farmer's market, so we thought it was a good idea to create like a brick and mortar store. Now you have all kinds of different lattes. You have the sweets, but I want to talk about this savory item right here. This is like a take on Eggs Benedict, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I love Eggs Benedictine and I always thought it was a good idea. But um, in order to be more aligned with our branding and with the things that we do here with our background, uh, we thought about uh, to twist it a little bit, though, a little bit. So that's why the Ranchero Eggs Benedictine made a lot of sense to us. Oh, look at that. <laughs> they were perfect. I mean, poached eggs cooked to perfection. That's what good. Yeah. <laughs> well, those are one of my favorite ones for sure. Wow. The ranchetto sauce on there. You can put that on anything. Yeah. And it's going to be delicious. Yeah, yeah. That's it's a little bit smoky even. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But the bread, I mean, you're making the bread here in-house. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. The bread is, the, uh, well, that's what it's a bakery. <laughs> and bakers are supposed to, uh, to yeah. bake. David's like, hey, David, listen up. We're a bakery, we make <laughs> bread here, okay? No, but I mean, it's incredible. This right here is being, it's all being done right here in-house. Yes. And you're, it's just a knock, knockout. This is crazy. If you want to get a breakfast bite unlike anything else in the Alamo City, you got to try the Ranchero Eggs Benedict. It's a little bit smoky, it's a little bit sweet, but overall, it's very savory and very filling. The sauce on there mixed with the eggs, the perfectly poached eggs, which is a killer point of this as well. That is the ideal bite that you want in the morning. Yes. That is so good. Yeah. And that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Well, uh, you, can, you can take it for uh, breakfast or you can take it for brunch too. Mm. And a little soup on the side. Absolutely incredible. Now, as you said, as you made very clear, right? This is a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> so you're making all different kinds of baked goods, but talk to me about what's going on here. These look incredible. So, okay, so this is the Tres Leches Croissant. It's a very Mexican thing. It's a very San Antonian thing. Um, but also, we are very well known uh, for our croissants. Um, I went for a school with, um, uh, with a French uh, background. So I learned about croissants, and Mexico City is also known for the croissants. So we tried to mix and put uh, something together, and these ones came out pretty good. Uh, also, we had a little bit of tequila on those ones. Oh, uh, and tequila is kind of your secret, right? Yes, you know the, kind of the I mean, secret, yes. The tequila almond croissant, which is one of the best bites you can get in the Alamo City, is right here at La Panaderia. But this one's the Tres Leches croissant. Give it a bite. <laughs> yeah. That one is to die for. Oh, wow. <laughs> If you're looking for something sweet, either it's breakfast, it's lunch, dinner, it's dessert, you gotta try the Tres Leches Croissant. It is packed full of so much flavor, the fresh fruit that's in there, and it's the mascarpone that's in there that's whipped up a little bit. It adds a whole different depth of flavor to it that you've never had before, and you gotta try. That one has several secrets. So usually when you're making Tres Leches, uh, you use like whipped cream. Mm -hmm. uh, but, wow. um, we wanted to take to a different level, so instead of using whipped cream, we use uh, mascarpone whipped cream. Oh my goodness! So there that's, you go. that's why the flavor comes like uh, more like more deep, and it's kind of different, and the quality is higher. Yeah, uh, and you can taste it for sure. Yeah, it's it's much more bold. Bold, yes. Yeah, and like whereas a whipped cream would be kind of like here and gone, uh -huh. that kind of stays with you a little bit longer. Yeah, exactly. The fresh fruit on there. Yeah. 
that's what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, it, it has to. Do, it has to, do, to be with fresh fruit for wow. sure. Wow! All right, David, already blowing my mind. Now this is the El Fabrito. This is the sunny side up version of the sandwich. You're baking the bread right here, but talk to me about what goes in the sandwich. Croissants is something that we really enjoy, but this one is made in, in, in it's, it's a round croissant, and it's something that uh, I really like. So I really like to eat like a croissant with eggs. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite things. That's, wow, what, that's yeah. where the name El Favorito came up. Because <laughs> it's your favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite, exactly. Uh, so we just try to put uh, something very simple together, which is a, a croissant with eggs uh, and, and and with cheese. Which yeah, I was gonna say you got like you kind of get your like your meat of choice, right? This one has the ham, the cheese, the egg, and look at that. That's the bite right there, y'all. I don't even know. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nap. I'm gonna eat one just after we finish. Oh my it goodness. That one is looks very, very good. With the name like El Favrito, you know the sandwich is gonna be really good because it's somebody's favorite, but it's actually David's favorite, which is really funny that he would call it that on the menu considering that it's his favorite item. It's got the sunny side up eggs. You can get scrambled on there as well. I highly recommend the sunny side up. A little bit of ham, a little bit of Swiss cheese on there, and a croissant. That's an ultimate breakfast bite. That is the best breakfast bite ever. And you have that perfectly cooked egg, the cheese on there, it's a little bit of that salty, savory. Yeah. And then you have the ham that, of course, a little bit is sweet, but it's, I mean, it's like, this is what you think of when you think of an all-American like, kind of sandwich pipe. This is incredible. Different items, all different kinds of characteristics to them, but they all taste high-end. Yeah. And would you say that more people are, go, are getting to go? Like, is that an option that you can get out here? Yeah, right now, ordering online, it's, uh, it's a good option. With uh, COVID-19 and everything that is going on, it's a safer way. So we have uh, lapanaderiaonline.com. So people is going to the online store, they're ordering everything. We have all, every item, it's online. So you can oh. order, just stop here and just take it, uh, take it to go. There you go. So if you want to stop in, go to, take it to go. Take it to go. Go online, La Panaderia right there. You can order everything. I love it. Absolutely incredible. I want to try a bite of everything that's in there on display. David, thank you so much for having us out David, here. it's always a pleasure. If you're looking for some delicious baked goods in San Antonio, you got to check out La Panaderia. Now, we're heading to the Botanical Gardens for a fresh salad recipe that you can make at home. Joining us now is Lexi Phelps. You are the chef and wellness program specialist out here at the Botanical Gardens. But what is CHEF? So CHEF is a local nonprofit. It stands for Culinary Health Education for Families. And they work to teach families and kids really basic cooking skills um, so that they can make healthier um, nutrition choices in their diet. Just like what's in front of us right now. It yeah, exactly. smells fresh, and that's important. And you have different items here. Now, have these been sourced from what's around us? Yeah, so we're making a Shirazi salad today, and I chose that because at its base is cucumbers, tomatoes, and fresh parsley. Ooh. And those are all things growing in our garden right now. And that's why our Chef Teaching Kitchen is so unique, because kids can come out here, get their hands dirty, harvest their own ingredients, and it's a really great way for them to connect with the plants. All right, so what do we do? All right, so I'm going to have you do everything. Okay. We're going to go ahead and put our cucumber in first. All you of don't want to put all of it. You're going to put <laughs> um, about, about just the top layer. Okay. Okay, that's good. And then Perfect. let's put some tomatoes. Tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes from the garden. And I mean, just to be able to go out there and source it all and then come over here and cook it, it gives you a whole new appreciation for vegetables, right? Definitely. Or for just like the, the agriculture, farmers. It's a big appreciation. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Next one. Yeah, so we're gonna add our um, garbanzo beans, which is a really great source of plant protein. Wonderful. And yeah, exactly. The kids being able to actually go into the garden and pick their own produce is just a really great way for them to understand that, you know, our food does come from the earth, it comes from plants. Um, so red onion, then we're gonna add that fresh parsley just on top a little bit. Ooh, that looks all right, pretty. and then with your tongs there, you're gonna toss that all together. Okay. I'm gonna get our dressing going. This is super simple, just olive oil, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Really can't go wrong. Ooh. Gonna put a little bit on this. I mean, this alone right there looks fantastic. It's beautiful, right? and yeah. that's a really huge thing we focus on with the kids. You know, the more colors you have in your bowl or on your plate from plants, the more vitamins and minerals you're getting. Put a little bit of that on top. You can toss that a little bit more. Awesome. Yeah, and there you have it. Super light, super refreshing. Great snack or side dish on a summer day. This looks amazing. That was so fast, y'all. That was so easy. Now, if somebody wanted to get this recipe for that dressing, could they could they find it on our website? Yeah, you can find it at chefsa.org. And if you want to know more about our partnership with Chef or the chef classes we have here at the Botanical Garden, you can check it out at www.sebot.org. That's delicious. And so fresh.
Well, now we're going to check out a food truck that is inspired by the San Antonio Spurs. This is the Spurs Street Eats food truck, and we're going to go inside and see what's on the menu. Joining me now is Carlos Ortiz. He's the assistant director of Levy Restaurants at the AT&T Center. And the man responsible for getting some wheels on this on this truck right here and get it rolling around town, right? Yep, partially, there was a few <laughs> of us working on it. It's an exciting project uh, that, that the Spurs have asked us to do and we're excited to do it. The experience that you have in a food trucks is not like you've been doing this for like a couple months, a couple years. You've been doing this for quite a while. I, overall in food and beverage, it's been 20 years and I was lucky enough to operate my own food truck in Miami several years ago. What dish is this? So these are the Venezuelan arepas and uh, with slow braised beef and uh, they're filled with spices and, um, and they're, it's, everything's caramelized inside with the vegetable. So please feel free, enjoy it. Give it a bite. Wow. <laughs> that is really good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. The meat is so tender. Yeah, well, that's because it's, it's slow cooked and braised, so. Mm. And like the flavor is just all throughout. It's, it's really the, you can tell there's a lot of love put into this. Uh, this is a Spurs food truck, but right. it's more like the food is inspired by the like San Antonio area and the concession, but it's not concession food. Right, no, not at all. Actually, the, the bigger inspiration was original street food. And so Chef Manny, this dish, um, it looks straightforward, but talk to me about it. What's going on here? We have a, a street taco concept. So we're doing, you know, three uh, mini tacos with can be pork, can be barbacoa. Yeah, street tacos, I mean, you can't go wrong with street tacos, right? Absolutely. A little bit of salsa verde on the side salsa as well. Salsa verde on the side, you know, everything made in house. Is it some cotija cheese on there as well? Cotija cheese, queso fresco. This is incredible. Is this the same braised beef that was in uh, the other dish as well, the arepa? That's correct. And that's, you know, that's what we wanted to show you that we can do either with the arepa or we can do with the taco. And uh, so we're going to have, you know, plenty of options for our customers. That braised beef, just put it in a quart container and sell it like that. <laughs> that is delicious. It is so juicy. It is. Very, Even on yeah, just we... right here, you put a little bit of the lime on there, the salsa verde, a little bit of cilantro on there, and the cheese. I mean, you got a very delicious street taco. Give me some love again, man. Ah. Woo! <laughs> All right. That is good. Fantastic. I love that the Spurs are doing this. They're going out there. And who knows what the truck will, will bring? You never know. So you make sure you follow them on social media. Uh, today is going to be their launch day, Saturday. Uh, you got to make sure you're going out to Lock and Terra for their grand opening event. But make sure you also, like I said, you follow them on social media because you'll know where they're going to be at. And maybe they're going to introduce some new items on social media before you get out there as well. Thank you so much. Uh, the food is fantastic. You can't go wrong. Go Spurs, go! Go Spurs. Coming up later in the show, we're heading to a Southside barbecue joint serving crazy brisket grilled cheese sandwiches. And next on the show, we're going to Holotus to get a taste of some wild churro desserts. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.